Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, this presentation, build once, use everywhere, creating reusable web components in minutes. So it took a few years to get to this moment of being able to claim it might take a few minutes. And how many of you are already using web components? Okay. It's built them yourself, web components. How many of you already knew you want at some point to use web components? Okay, good. I, I, I was there in, my, in the previous company I worked for and I was like, I know web components would have a solution but I didn't have any time or you know, enough understanding to, to dive into it. Cool, so we're gonna, let's begin. This is me. Uh, thanks to uh, Floyd at Drupal Camp and Mike Herschel helping me contributing for the first time. Eventually I became a core maintainer for Mummy, helping with different things there. I can't uh, recommend enough contributions and getting to know the community by that and advancing your own knowledge so much by being part of, uh, of that process. I uh, co-created Drupal Rector, if anyone already know what it does, but it's every time I'm trying to think is what would make it easier for everyone. And Drupal upgrades were a daunting task until we figure out there are some tools out there and utilize Rector and create a Drupal Rector um, that allow now people to get automatic upgrades. And um, my latest thing is Drupal Pod, which is literally Drupal contributions in one click, making people's life easier to get to contributions uh, by using this extension. Um, and I think that's what drive me on into web components as well as that thought of what it make, what would make it easy, easier for all of us. So first let's define what is the problem we're trying to solve. And please tell me if you disagree, I'm open. But I just think that we continuously build identical components and merely styling them differently, right? Like, through all your website had like a button or something that looked like a button, where they would need a card, a nice header, a hero, sometimes an accordion. We'll always ask for that slideshow, even that we were able to convince them almost not to have it. Um, and, and the next website would have the same components pretty much. They would need that accordion and that hero and they just look a little differently but it's all pretty much we are building the same. Then another uh, problem I encountered before it's okay so I built components and previously a few years ago I used Pattern Lab to build a nice uh, group of components and it worked really nice and we had a way to present it to the client before the website is ready. And like all these cool things and we had it all in Twig. But then we wanted to add some extra stuff to the Drupal website and some things were, had to be written in a framework like Vue.js. And all of a sudden these beautiful Pattern Lab components can no longer be utilized because now that Twig needs to be rewritten and a bunch of things need to be rewritten and they're not really part of the presentation we show the clients because now it's a separate code. Any other issues you wish this would solve? That you can think of? I'm sure there's plenty. Faster. And what? Faster. Faster, yes. So, the solution. Use web components. Right, because and now I'll explain, hopefully at the end of this session, you'll fall in love with web components and wouldn't uh, want to wait for start using it. Although you, you'll need some things, but it's really easy, so we'll get to that. So in my opinion, the single directory component, which is amazing, I think is on track, right? Like it's, instead of today's Drupal world thing, like I love Olivero menu. It's, it has so much good accessibility best practice built into it and it, it's amazing. I want to bring it to my project. I don't know if you try bringing it to your project, but then you need to figure out which twig, which JavaScript, which, which CSS you need to put together so you can have the menu. So I think single directory component solves exactly that. Now 
will have one place where, you know, I have an Olivero-like menu that I can even share between projects or put it out there in an open source repository and everybody can use this awesome menu. But single directory component is very Drupal specific, right? Like I cannot benefit from that so much once I look elsewhere. Web components do enable us to use consistent, accessible component rapid de delivery because web components, as we see, are web standards. Um, again, this is, this is my own theory, but I, I'm looking at uh, React as the modern day jQuery. If you're familiar with jQuery, a lot of us learned J jQuery because it was in Drupal. Even though from the time that jQuery was introduced, JavaScript already got a little modernized back then and could pretty much do the same thing of what jQuery, jQuery could do, but jQuery became a thing and now we're still working on trying to pull it out of Drupal core. And React to me is a similar thing where originally when it started, it, it had so many benefits and, and changed how people think of creating things. But so much of that can be done with simple JavaScript, with way less dependencies to achieve similar things. And the beautiful thing about web components, this is no longer a framework, a dependency that, you know, jQuery is still great, right? 70% I think are still using it, but how many are still actively wanna build the next site with jQuery? If they only knew a similar line in regular JavaScript, does the same thing. You don't need jQuery involved in it. So the, if you will go to MDN, you will see that uh, Web Component is actually a name for three different standards that are now available on all modern browsers. But when we talk modern browsers, it's finally Internet Explorer 11 is no longer a thing. It took a while to get there. I think everybody agree now, and hopefully your project don't require that. Um, and without that, before that, you had to use some uh, polyfills and things like that. But now without it, all modern browsers just have that. So that means that if you are using web components today, the chances for the same component to continue do the same thing it did for 10 and maybe 20 years is fairly strong because a web standard, it's like anchor element. I think we lost the, the blink and the, there was another one like that was removed from or being deprecated from HTML, but all the rest that are useful are, are staying there. Web components allow us to, uh, the custom, I, I didn't expect you to read it, but just so you know, like MDN says stuff about the web component, I'll explain it here. Um, so custom elements is the ability to name your component. As we're familiar with anchor element, H1, H2, H3, any native element of HTML has a one word name. This standard allows us to create any name. The only limit is it has to have a minimum of a word, a dash, and another word. So I can invent whatever name I want. It's almost like I think about it as teaching the browser of the component I wish it could do natively. Right, like imagine accordion would be a thing, like an HTML element, you just type accordion and just work as you expect and have some attributes to allow you to change and modify how it behaves. So web components allow us to teach the browser an element that it has no understanding of. It doesn't exist in other projects. So custom element is that ability to use new names of elements. Shadow DOM, I think a lot of people are bumping into that and that's a big hurdle for them. Uh, at phase two, we went through that. It's, I, I don't think it's such a big thing, like once you understand what it does and how to use it correctly, it's great. In essence, in your document, when you apply CSS, the styles apply all over the document, right? And we have the cascade and all the rules and different libraries are trying to help us solve cascade issues, pretty much. Shadow DOM allows you to have whatever CSS you want that nothing with an asterisk is going to penetrate into that scope 
and nothing gonna bleed out of that scope. So I can make my accordion look in a certain way and know that another CSS is not gonna go and modify it. So it allows me a, a lot of freedom in how I want things to look and keep them like that. So at phase two, where I work, and we do all of our projects now with a web components library that we're developing called Outline, where we're basically solving all these issues that we worked on. Uh, we're still improving it. It's, it's going through a major upgrade now, and it's open source. So I hope everybody would be using it and, and benefiting from it. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, anyway, in Shadow Dome, you just get to style your own thing. It's not going to go anywhere, and it's remaining there. HTML templates is that reusable thing, um, that ability to say how the template is going to look like, and then it's going to be used in different places. And slots, if you've been to the single directory component, is generic concept. I think React has it and everything. Vue has it of... It's, I don't, it's a placeholder. Something gonna happen here when I'm building my accordion uh, component. I don't know what content it will have. So I'm gonna slot it in. That's what the slot is used for. So all these are standards. You can write vanilla JavaScript and HTML and benefit. Sometimes, something I'm looking into now, um, when I'm working on a link component, and the link component, all I really needed to do, uh, often we see in our project a link that needs to look like a button. It's not a button, but it looks like a button. It might have five different variants for that project. And we, um, sometimes we don't need too much JavaScript around it. It's a link. It's like so simple. So the idea is perhaps using just custom elements instead of a full-blown web component, I might just use custom element, which means I would give it a name of whatever it needs to do, link like a button, or I can call it whatever I want, and I have it working with that CSS. I didn't use other, other things. Any questions so far? Quick question. Yeah. If, if you're coming to it in a little bit, then you can skip it. Um, so HTML first web component. This idea, HTML first web component. Yeah. First HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Is that different than a generic web component? Uh, that would be my my way. So the question was like, should we do HTML first web components? So one of the things that happen with web components, like you get a lot of power to do whatever you want. So you can mess things up big time easily. Because imagine you can tell a component to do whatever you want including influence other components and do other things. You have JavaScript, like you can do anything you want. So you have to, if your intention is to be able to produce more projects faster, just be smart about it and not do whatever you feel like. So to me, I love accessibility. I think it's so important. And HTML, I think, is like the, the most important piece of accessible good components. So within the component, when you have good HTML markup, and we'll talk about how to utilize Drupal great markup in my web components, by having great HTML, there's less things that are going to be messed up, less work for everybody later on. Um, yeah, which is, I think, very different from, uh, I wouldn't generalize, but often when other libraries are involved, not necessarily HTML takes the, 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 you know, the importance that it, I think it should. So the way we were using it, um, we're using a library called Lit. Uh, Lit.dev is an amazing website that will teach you about this library. I was just talking about all this like, hey, we don't need dependencies, and here, a dependency. <laughs> but you could write the same things without Lit, but it's kind of a little annoying because it's extra, extra, right? Like, I'm sure you could, I mean, that's, maybe it's a big jump, but. You could write PHP instead of using Drupal, but there's like all these nice things that it allows you to do, and that's what Lit does for us. It's all the boilerplate code that's like running again and again and again, 
Uh, you need to define it. You need to put it in the shadow. You need to attach child, like all these things. Yeah. Uh, let me show you quickly what lit looks like. Woohoo. Okay. Yeah, so Lita Dev, amazing website because they have really good documentation. Uh, learn, uh, playground, which really lets you like see code and immediately and what, what that code does. This is their homepage and you would see it's like it's a 5K library, so really small, not so harmful. That is how a web component would look like when you write it with Lit. I didn't put other example with how you write it with vanilla JavaScript, but trust me, there's more lines than this. How many of you are familiar with JavaScript? Okay, so you shouldn't see, like what's nice about Lit, it doesn't add a lot of new stuff that without it, like what is this magic doing? So it, it explicitly asks you to import any specific cool gadgets you're using. So we're getting HTML, CSS, and lit element from a library called lit. We're using custom element and property from a decorated library. So all these things, the specifics, uh, allow us to do things even, even smaller. Here we're going to define a new component called simple greeting. And we're going to tell the browser, this is actually the element component. So there's already what's really, really nice about it is the ability to extend components. Instead of recreating something, if I have accordion that I use everywhere, but now a client asks for a special accordion, it's like a fancy accordion. Instead of rewriting accordion, I can just extend my existing accordion, just like here it's being extended lit element, so it would be accordion element or something. And by extending it, only I need to write only the overrides or the enhancements. All the rest of the code is based on that base accordion. So we're extending lead element, getting all other magic in here, put some CSS, and there's different ways to apply CSS. This is like one of the ways. Property means like we will allow when simple greeting is being called, you can add an attribute. The attribute is called name. So then by calling simple greeting, like you see here, attribute of name equals something, the result would be that's a render function of returning HTML that says hello and bringing the property. So very, I think it's simple to read. It takes maybe some time to, to get used to it, but then you get so much out of the box to, to create beautiful, amazing things. Any questions about that part? Okay. Move it aside. Yeah, so Shadow Dom. Um, who knows what Shadow Dom is? Yeah, a few. So, yeah, I, I think I mentioned it, but Shadow Dom is this piece of code that is protected from other styles, most styles, some of them, like I believe it's color and font family and, and CSS variables, can go through intentionally. And otherwise, that Shadow DOM is not getting any styles in and doesn't bleed any styles out. So, um, yeah, just to learn to work with it in a smart way, I think, is a key. And I'll speak about it as well. Another thing we learned in the hard way is we had web components, and it was beautiful because we, have, we get from our designers design system that says this brand should look like this, right? Exactly that. And, in, and we're building this card that has an image, a title, and a description here. So the user in Drupal would be able to add a custom block and that tweak would include that web component. So the card would just work. And guess what happened when an editor gets a cool toy to play with? They see that card and all of a sudden they want to use the same one but without a picture. So now we need to get the front end design, the front end developer again, and ask like, can you change the components? So, you know, it can be an option with a picture, an option without a picture. So the idea of creating them flexible is my recommendation of try to make all the slots optional. You can have multiple slots in the same component. The more you can think about it ahead of time of making a slot optional, the better. 
because then the client would have that flexibility of deciding, oh, I want that card without an image or with or, or some other parts or things twisted. All that would help you not to get that code back again in order to modify it, as well as between projects. The more flexible your component is, the more projects can share it. There is, I, I didn't figure out the name yet exactly. I don't know if there's any official name for that, but the understanding of two types of components. Continuing the idea of flexible things, we want to, whenever possible, we want to use components in components. One of the components I love using on websites is a container component. That container component already know how to behave on a mobile site, and as I'm making the screen wider, it will maintain a really nice uh, margins until it gets to a max width. So I know that if a person using Layout Builder, and each component, each piece is handled by that container, that container, because the web component, even have an attribute of full bleed, because sometimes all of a sudden I need to be outside of that content with that all the rest of the content sits in. So that container allows me to place everything correctly. That container component is a layout container kind of component because <coughs> all it cares is where things would be positioned. That container that I worked on is a little fancier because it also has the ability of putting background images to the container and even has like, which was very easy to implement, uh, an animation option because now when every component also have a container, I think Layout Builder, above it, I can ask in the block custom options, what kind of animation do I want? Do I want to slide in, bumpy, whatever it is? It's all behaving the same because I get a container. Within a container, I get that card, three cards, whatever I want to put. So I'm using components in components. So layout is one kind, and the other one is more specific. That's the widget, like it has a more specific, like the link component is definitely a very small one, very specific, might be more opinionated and have less options. Oh. <clears throat> Using Drupal markup. So we uh, struggled with that for quite some time. Drupal, especially if you're using good uh, base themes have great markup, you know, like you're getting the menu, the pager, you name it, so much good markup that would take some time to replicate or copy paste. But Drupal already has so many good things, like the responsive image coming from Drupal is a great piece of code. Yes, I could create a web component that would do it for me, but instead, Drupal already <coughs> generates for me a great markup I can utilize. If you try it or if you will get into web components, you will learn that web component has some kind of uh, what seems to be a limitation. If I'm creating a web component, a menu web component or something, the styling of the slot, right? Imagine that the menu component is here and in it I want to just give it Drupal markup. And Drupal markup contains my whole nav element and ul and li elements and everything but i want in using working on project lines i want to style that menu in a very specific way within the component you can style slots slot is that markup coming from drupal but the limited way is it only would allow you to style the first element so if a menu start with a nav element i can style nav and it wouldn't let me, from within the component, in a traditional way, to style anything else. Is that part clear? Also, another issue with that, when you try to style, in the traditional way, um, a slot, it would have the lowest dependency or uh, specificity of CSS. So if I told the component, I want that slot to be so-and-so and have a border 5px red, any other uh, CSS coming from Drupal, generic one, would have higher specificity to what I wrote there. So uh, I'll explain soon what we're doing about it, but it's something to know that 
It's great to bring Drupal markup. You should just understand a little bit about how to style it, which we'll get to in a second. Using an auto lazy loader, the latest thing I created was actually allowing us to have, so imagine our, uh, all of our components, sometimes are one megabyte, sometimes two megabytes, because a lot of things happen there, and icons, and like, right, it's like, it's a whole system. Uh, yes, you can load it once, and all the other pages wouldn't need it anymore, but it's a big chunk. So, auto lazy loader, is a really cool way of just loading really tiny, less than 1K code, that immediately check what are the components that we need to load and just load those components. So on a page on mobile, maybe it's load the menu and load the hero and that's it. As I scroll down, it already using the, the lazy loading of the browser. So you're getting all the upcoming components loading <coughs> as you go, but the initial page load performance, Google page speed, all these cool numbers are much, much higher because you finally are allowing to load only what the user is seeing when they're opening your beautiful homepage in a mobile that shows so, so little of it. Um, the, the other benefit is once I load the menu in Hero, chances are that the next page would also have some, a menu and probably in here, a Hero. These two components are already loaded. The next time the browser is just using the local storage and everything is faster. So even if we cut, instead of loading this huge design system into the browser, we're just getting the auto loader to choose only what's on the page. And if the user did not scroll down on a mobile example or desktop, so some components don't need to be loaded and that's a good thing. So the, the latest magic we uh, discovered, which is another web standard, anybody heard of adopted style sheets? Yes, no? What? Cool. Me neither. A few months ago, I'm like, hey, that's a thing. So if you'll go MDN Google, you see adopted style should be a thing. And this is a quote from MDN, uh, this, you know, they have a whole page. I'll explain what I understand of and how we do, how we use this magic. When we need CSS added to an HTML, we can add inline CSS, right, like style equals something, we can load it with a link, right? we, can, we can bring another page of CSS, and apparently we can use JavaScript to ask, to add to the document CSS another piece of CSS. You could ask to replace it completely or add in addition to. Adapted style sheet work on two things. The document object, which is every page that you look at, has one style attached to it. If you remember, we spoke about Shadow DOM of the individual pieces. You can also use adapted style sheet, basically loading CSS file into your component using the same adapted style sheet method. So that is style sheet work on both document which we call now a lot of time light DOM, right? Because that's not shadow DOM, that is where the CSS specificity is working, and we use it to load things into shadow DOM. What that allows us is for the developer experience to be so nice. Keep in mind that the developer is creating a component that need to look like the brand they're working on, and within that, and we mentioned, let's bring Drupal markup, which could be a lot of things, and definitely nested and not just one level. Now with adapted style sheet, I get so many benefits by having a CSS file that is styling everything I want in that slot, and is being loaded by JavaScript, and I'm kind of bypassing the normal way of how the, right, the slotted mm -hmm. styles that's supposed to work with in lit and what you would see in documentation. But with these limitations, we found that by using adapted style sheet command, actually it's super fast and help us um, load it into the right place. So that allows us to have all that markup styled as we want. Um, I thought I had another thing, but I can't find it now. So thanks to my memory now, 
Another thing we are using is um, because I mentioned at the beginning we have components that are being reused in more and more projects. And each project has their own brand. How can we minimize the amount of work it takes to change the branding of pretty much the same components? What we got to is using design tokens. How many of you heard of design tokens? Cool. Design tokens of future. So design token now being uh, have a, like a whole W3C uh, uh, a standards being written. I'm not sure if it is complete or not. Uh, how many of you, are, of you are familiar with CSS variables? Yay. Okay. So CSS variables, very cool. Uh, anyone can tell me what's not nice about CSS variables that you encountered? A shortcoming? Something? So I can tell you what I don't like. So if you have a lot of... So we, we want it to be fancy. So we use CSS variables everywhere. Why? Because a CSS variable, whoever doesn't know yet, is kind of using variables in CSS. It's a placeholder that says, oh, that button's going to have a primary color. I don't know yet what primary color is, but it's going to be a thing that tells you what to be, and then you can do all the rest. And because I know primary color, I would know the background color and the text color and how big it is. And so my components now can have these placeholders where another file will define what the brand is. The biggest shortcoming I found in CSS variables is if you try to debug them. Except for actually Safari, I didn't see any browser that make it comfortable to debug CSS variables. If you try to open DevTools and you click on it, well, is that the real value, the, you know, the, the added value? It's really confusing, at least for me. And if you can teach me about that, I would love to learn. The cool thing around that, we use, uh, your project use Figma. We use Figma a lot for all the projects. And uh, Figma has, um, they call it variables. And I think there's a special plugin to use design tokens. So my recommendation is, and where we're shifting into, when the Figma designer create everything, they're exporting design tokens. A design token is a JSON file. It's a hierarchy of these like primary colors. Uh, you can put button, you can put anything you want in there, but it's a hierarchy that defines the different values of different things. Or sometimes, instead of defining a value, it's defining a placeholder. Like, for this button text, always use primary color. And another token would define what is that primary color. When Figma exports their tokens, you're getting a JSON file. Now, the common thing to do is using, I think it's called uh, the Amazon, because I think Amazon created Style Dictionary. Anybody, anyone heard about Amazon Style Dictionary? So Amazon Style Dictionary, really cool package um, that takes a JSON file but can export it to CSS. There's some native apps that need something with it. Like It's really cool because it allows you to get JSON into CSS variables. So when Figma finish their work, they can export something that can give us CSS. But because of the debug issues, so debugging CSS variables is not easy at all, uh, my favorite latest is we're using post CSS. Are you using post CSS? I love it. I think it's great. It does uh, a lot of what I really like about post CSS is I feel it brings things that are going to be standard soon. You can use them now. So if it needs some polyfills, some other things, it takes care of that and makes things very nice and easy. So we're using post CSS plugin that understand tokens. So now our button's background color, instead of using CSS variable, is saying design token, and in parentheses, button color. When post CSS running, the button color actually gonna be hard coded. Because in my experience, most of the things we use CSS variables for are not really variables. Like, I, I need the variables because it makes my life easy to bring them to different projects. But from, for within the page that is loaded, I don't need it to be flexible. I don't need it to know how to change colors, for the most part. 
I just needed to know what this brand asked that button to be. So by post CSS putting hard code value and replacing tokens, which you could actually create specific CSS variables whenever you do find it useful. So you have that flexibility creating dynamic options. And these dynamic options would get their hard-coded value from JSON. So utilizing all that using web components is what allow us to ship project faster and better. We get our components version. So if you have Accordion 1.0, and we found an accessibility upgrade, we're gonna ship Accordion 1.1 in Outline, and any project that won can just bring it. So we will use similar as Drupal, minor versioning whenever there's no uh, breaking uh, backwards compatibility, and we're gonna create Accordion 2 whenever the whole API, the syntax change, if we get to that. But the beauty thing about that, we work on multiple projects at the same time, find new edge cases or improvements these improvements come back to Outline itself, and all the projects using Outline can just have components that are now better. So we're using that, we're working on switching into the design token, so Figma is defining all of our tokens that are being placed into the uh, components, and that allows us to recreate components is now very rare, a rare occasion, right? Because that component, I needed the same here. I only want the style to change. And once we complete the setup of the styles to work with design tokens, the, probably developers wouldn't even touch CSS for those components. They'll just get that project Figma design token file, the JSON file, and automatically your whole storybook or whatever system you want to use to display your components and Drupal would look like that brand that you're working on. And that's what I have for you. Any questions? What do you think of the disadvantages of using this stuff in Florence, like pros and cons? And will be the downside. Why not using web components? Yeah. Good question. Um, Maybe I'll I think this I'm onboarding a new people or really So yeah, I, I so we we've been working for like three years now just with web components. I found it much, much easier to bring developers that not necessarily know Drupal and get them up to speed really fast. Because they need to understand HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. We love using TypeScript. Again, it's like a hurdle to, to get into. Mm -hmm. It helped me learn, understand HTML so much better because TypeScript forced me to understand what am I looking for, what am I doing, and adding some types. Uh, nowadays, with AI, for sure, TypeScript is easy peasy. Um, and so that's how we're using it. And so it makes developer onboarding really fast. I think understanding the concept and Shadow DOM, if you just look at examples out there in a previous uh, presentation, someone mentioned, uh, the, the presenter mentioned Shoelace, which is an amazing web component library. Mm -hmm. But that web component library uh, was not looking into um, Drupal specifically, where I mentioned how great it is to use Drupal markup so the way shoelace work is if you have a menu, you want a menu, and each menu you should have like a main menu components because it is set to get a slot that is very simple. Mm -hmm. Like the link is all there. So that would be my main thing of yeah, to look into good examples or ask us questions in outline of phase two and understand that once you have that, that same, I, I don't know if I wrote it, but I thought it's like obvious, but when you have a web component, that goes into Tweak. That in the Drupal world, that, that's where we place it. We need Drupal to load an auto loader on every page, which yeah. understand what else is coming. And in Twig, we're just using web component and sometimes nested web components. I need a web component of container and the slot of that would be another or three cards. I even have a special components for layout. So when using layout builder and you can create uh, certain layouts that the designer decide that's how it should work and I need to make it all responsive. I just have a simple component 
that manage these layouts and then all the other developers don't need to deal with that it just works and then let's say if you have a component that um, uses a JavaScript and you use this component multiple times in the page is this JavaScript like loaded once or every for every component great question you can control it or how yeah so the uh, when you look at the vanilla JavaScript of how components are being built, you define that component for that page for the browser to know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. That action only needs to be done once. So the autoloader is loading how to run my dash accordion once, mm -hmm. and any time my accordion uh, happens again, it already has that code. It does not need to load it again. Okay. Yes. Um, you referenced the style of dictionary. Yeah. Is that um, functionally part of Figma? Not at all. So, Amazon style dictionary is, uh, I think that's what they were trying to do. It's a dictionary. It, it, it allows you to bring in different kind of formats that has to it's do with tokens. Yes. Like, so we, we found an example, I'm trying not to use it, but we, we actually need it now because I forgot if Figma does not allow, there's something with font weight or something that Figma decide this should be done in a certain way, but the actual CSS cannot be done like that. We need to use a different word. So we would use style dictionary to convert these specific options when Figma is being weird, here's the standard that we're actually gonna use. Um, yeah, so this uh, style dictionary would, dictionary would run usually once when we get something new from Figma, getting our file set, and then we can work on our components. Right, and working on components, we get to choose if to use Storybook. A lot of people like Storybook. I like it a little less because I think there's so much complexity. We're trying to move into using MDX files because it's less Storybook specific. Uh, we're looking into uh, putting the presentation in Astro, but, but for me, some of the, the easiest way to get to work on components is I'm writing a tiny little HTML file that loads my component, because if I need to debug complex things of what's happening or not happening, having less Drupal, less other components interrupting and seeing like what is the issue is really, really useful. So it's like just a few lines of bring the component JavaScript, here's the component, and I get to use dev tools and all the cool tools to, to solve the problems. So you would go from the X over standard markup much long time? What do you mean by standard markup? Well, just, you, I mean, if you were doing something towards Astro, I guess you can use standard markup or... Right, with Astro, we, yeah, Astro we're exploring now because it looks easy and great and doesn't have a lot of dependency and all and would and create out of the box beautiful documentation um, yeah but you get to choose how do you want to show your components and, and just the fact that it's so easy to put a component in any system that allows you for HTML and you can bring them into react you can bring them to view or anything else make it easy yeah so when you develop components, how much do you care about the browser compatibility or difference between them? Uh, is it really like a showstopper sometimes or? But what, what do you mean by browser compatibility? Let's say if you use a JavaScript, you use uh, typically what, vanilla JavaScript or a library, right? And, uh, and you created, let's say, I don't know, an accordion. Yeah. Uh, it may be displayed or working differently based on the browser. So, does that happen a lot? Or? No, almost never. So, usually the issues would be more around CSS and around Safari. Mm -hmm. you know, yep. Some people call it Safari 11 because it's like bring all these issues. Right. Uh, of like, it's Safari decided that their CSS, so it's not really web component related, it's because, or recently, I really enjoy using the has CSS option. But Firefox decided not to implement until recently, so it made some things yeah, look... Yeah, how do you think you keep, keep track of all of the changes in between browsers? Safari does one thing, Mozilla does another. There's uh, Chromium and all the rest. Are they, as you said, like, it's almost never happened. But yeah, I would usually look at uh, PostCSS to solve things for that, like that for me, to transpile it into something that is working. 
But today, I really enjoy how modern browsers are moving pretty much together. It's almost never a thing like, I created this, and it doesn't use it. Like, web components, all these standards are all in all the browsers, so we don't need to really deal with other things. But we're writing tests, we're writing different things to make sure things don't break as we change them in order to, to keep. But the maintenance of a component now becomes uh, dramatically reduced. My uh, wish and dreams is uh, as we have a single directory component in Drupal, I wish to be a JSON or a YAML file, something that come with it. So I can put a web component instead of the regular single directory component for Drupal to know what are the fields allow automatically in the component, but that's my dream where I hope that Drupal would have, you know, like I, I think I'm using Drupal because we don't need to reinvent the wheel and we're using patches of modules because someone already solved the same problems. What's the point of me reworking on that? So my real dream is beyond the single directory components, components that will have web components library that are good for Drupal or anything else. I really think that Drupal has such a good lead on on being accessible and, and doing great things. And by doing it like that, it can share it among other projects would be great. Yes? Uh, am I understanding that web components are kind of just like client side? Is, 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 if you choose to go web components on your Drupal site, is it, are your components like client side rendered? Like, and does that have any effect on SEO? Like, because I know that was a big thing to write. Great question. Five. So the way with our uh, experience, we learned that, think of my container example that have a Drupal content in it, or accordion that has Drupal content in it. So really the only thing above is instead of a div, now it's called my accordion. What SEO receives is a really good Drupal markup for the most part. So all that markup is already sent from the server to the browser. I am looking into what would it take to use a, a server-based uh, component. Server rendered, I forgot server the name. Server rendered, yeah. Yes, server rendered. I'm not sure, but it's it's also, it, it works already so well, especially with the autoloader, that just like, you know, few little things that's loading, it's, it's get their styles, get their JavaScript. Sometimes, many times, the JavaScript is very minimal because I just need it to look like something but not do uh, certain things. So from SEO perspective, when we use it like that and injecting a lot of Drupal markup, so a link in a regular web component, link would usually be its own component. When you tell the component, I need you to go to this href and I need you to say that. So an SEO would read something like that, it wouldn't really see that this is a link unless the SEO um, already processed the JavaScript and I know Bing had an issue with it, maybe they solved it since. But, but it's a problem we saw before with SEO and we tried to do the web component on that and not use real HTML markup, it bites us uh, back. So instead, we're just whatever Is Drupal can give us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, yeah. we, we make the component use. Yeah. Providing slotted content, like on the Drupal side, you're okay. Because okay. when you start pulling stuff from the API, then it's all clients yeah uh, definitely I mean we, we had a company um, coming to us to help with their components because their page score is so low and we're looking into that the web component is like is not like, the 14 megs of videos they're loading is what causing the whole thing instead of, you know, so, and yeah, they could use the autoloader in order to make that smaller, not a big chunk of a whole components library. That would be a great upgrade for them, but otherwise so many other things are causing a, a way bigger um, performance issues. Yeah. Any other questions? What, what about asset aggregation? Or do you recommend, because you said you use some kind of preloader? So, like CSS, JS aggregation per page, let's say, when it's cached, you don't use it? Or aggregate? Yeah. Well, Drupal has its own thing, right? right? Like, it's minimal. I, I'm trying to make Drupal do minimal CSS stuff. Sometimes I need it because of 
uh, ba uh, back-end theming and different things might need to be there, but all the rest, my components taking care of that because they already have the exact um, minimized compiled code, but it is not, I don't have a process yet that take all that code and load it because on that page I already know this is what's going to be loaded, if that makes sense. Uh, but that could be, maybe we'll look into it and it sounds more like and in like, it sounds to me more like the server uh, rendered version where it like already have that code attached to that component, but I'm not sure how much would it improve things or make things better or faster. So you, you compile all your components separately, right? Like in, uh, from TypeScript, you have separate smaller files for each component? Right, or? so we actually have a process to do both. We have one to load uh, one giant big one mm -hmm. if needed and we have one that within every folder structure that we have is putting all these really really small javascripts and the auto loader automatically know where to find them according to the name in their html yes uh you mentioned phase two outline was your outline yeah it, it, where can i go to learn more about that uh, github.com slash phase two slash outline. Okay. It's, uh, yeah. Is there yeah. a demo site or something where I could... I think we already have, like, a documentation site there. Let me check. It just, I just know we're going through a big upgrade to, like, with all of our learnings. Of uh -huh. Like, oh, we shouldn't do that anymore. Um, I was wondering if there's, like, a, like a, an ideal implementation of a demo or something. Uh, there is an ideal implementation. I promise we're going to have it in there. So this is when you go to, well, you cannot see it, but it says outline.phase2tech.com. I got to that link by going to GitHub. Uh, okay. GitHub.com phase2 slash outline. So over here, that's our outline. We're making it better. So a, a chunk of it would be like the consumer is important. It's not the web component is just magically solving things. We need to think a little bit of what would consume it. And that's where right now it's Storybook. I think later it's going to change to Astra and thing where you can see some of the components we're using here. But we will to talk here in, in guides of how do we think you should do things. And again, what's really nice about this, you can bring, I don't know if this is updated already, but really to, you can use, it doesn't have to be Drupal, it doesn't have to be anything, but you can import a tiny thing and now you have image component or other things working on your site. We're trying to keep it with minimal or no dependencies. So it's easy to bring thing and they stay and remain small. So this documentation page would get better as we're improving it now with all these best practices. One more cool thing I want to do, I didn't do it yet, but we'll get there. So for now, this is uh, stolen from Adobe. Anybody see it before? It's Spectrum Token Visualizer. It's really cool because, uh, can I, I guess zoom like this. Once you have token and JSON, it's not nice to read it, but having a nice visual way to click on a component and then seeing which com which tokens are connected to it and what are they said and then the ability to add a theme right think of light theme versus dark theme and you need all these other values so we will work on that as well of allowing us to use Figma whenever someone does need to dive into what's the actual tokens using some kind of visualizer and all that sitting in the web component itself that just Remain the same one, but look like the brand we're working on. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>